What happens when we lose a neutral in a multi-wire branch circuit? You're not gonna wanna miss this. All right, so this is actually a very good video for electricians. We cover a lot of different equations and math, but really when you have a multi-wire branch circuit, which is a circuit of more than one hot that shares a neutral, right? So we have like a black and a red that we run out with a neutral in 12.3 to something. We have two different loads that are on. Well, what happens if the neutral somehow burns up or there's something lost and power continues to run through those loads? This is kind of an interesting thing because it's gonna screw up some equipment potentially. So first thing, let's look at just a regular circuit that has equal loads. If you have equal loads, and I mean identical loads, ideal situation, probably 99.9% .9 of the case, or the times this is not gonna be the case. But let's say we have two exactly identical loads, two fans or whatever. Um, they're both five ohms of resistance and they're both 2800 or 2880 uh, watts. That's what the power that they're transferring from the electrical circuit into mechanical motion and they're putting out power through the fan. In this situation, we're not gonna have any current flowing on the neutral anyways. So it really doesn't matter. The overall circuit is what's gonna be drawing current. You're gonna, you're, you're probably saying to yourself like, wait, 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 it's 220 volt circuits though. So there's gotta be a completed circuit through the neutral. That's not how it works. If you take your clamp on ammeter and you go across that neutral, there's no current flowing. The, amount of current flowing through here is canceling out because it's going like this, right? So any current coming through here and trying to go through here, current's not going to be able to flow. There is zero current flow, which means current is taking the overall circuit through both of these loads to achieve this. I know a lot of people want to argue with that at first, but I'm going to get into the examples of how that actually works. But if you have two equal loads and you cancel out a neutral, the circuit's still going to work just fine. Everything is going to keep functioning because those loads are identical. Same amount of current's going to be drawn, but now we have a 240 volt circuit instead of two separate 120 volt circuits. So let me show you. Say we cut that neutral out. Now, instead of two separate resistors that are both five ohms a piece, we have a 10 ohm resistor and we have across those resistances, the combined power, the combined power transfer of both of the 2880s and that's 500 or 5,760 watts. So now we just have a bigger load essentially. It has more resistance, but we're also doubling the voltage. So the same amount of current is gonna flow through both of these things as it would through one of them independently. So you're not gonna burn up the loads even though now it has twice as much pressure pushing it, you have twice as much resistance as well. So it's the same current flow. So let's get into the math a little bit. We got Ohm's law, Joule's law. I know you guys hate when I call it Joule's law, but that's what it is. <laughs> um, it, and on that blood, people are like, no, Joule's law is a function of time. Well, amperage is a function of time as well. So even including amperage in Joule's law, is a rate so we can just drop the the time function and it is still Joule's law haters i know you're gonna get in the comments and go in a frenzy <laughs> all right so we start out with ohm's law just to prove that the current flow is going to be the same regardless if it's a 120 volt circuit or a 240 volt circuit if we take e equals i over r we're trying to or yeah i equals e over r sorry we hide the i we get e over r so we're going to say for the 120 volt current uh, what is the actual current flow? So on the 120 volt side of things, we have 120 volts divided by a five, a five ohm resistor, 24 amps. Okay, so that's both of those loads when they're in the 120 volt situation, they're gonna draw off 24 amps. If we drop our neutral out, now we have an overall 240 volt circuit, but now we have two resistors in series with each other, which means it's a 10 ohm resistor. We take 240 divided by 10, still 24 amps. So a lot of people don't like thinking about that though, right? They're like, oh, it's not a 240 volt circuit. It's got a neutral. Yeah, try cutting that neutral on the exact same loads and see what happens. It's gonna function the exact same way. There's gonna be zero change in those loads at all. Kind of mind blowing, right? So that's pretty cool. But what happens when we don't have balanced loads? This is where the problem starts to exist. So say that we've got two loads that we've run out. We're normally running them on two separate 120 volt circuits, but they are a multi-wire branch circuit. So they share a neutral. Well, what's gonna normally happen since you just have two different resistances that are hooked up with a neutral is the imbalance of those two different size loads is gonna travel on that neutral. So if we've got a 
1800 watt toaster over here, there's a certain amount of resistance. A 600 watt TV, it's gonna be a different amount of resistance that that current's gonna flow through. So if we look at the load as, you know, this circuit is a 15 amp circuit and this circuit is a five amp circuit, the difference between those two, the imbalance is what that neutral is gonna carry. So if you take your clamp on ammeter with both of these things turned on and running, you're gonna see 10 amps of current flowing on that neutral. So it just means that there's 15 amps flowing through this way at the same time that there is five amps flowing this way. So both of these circuits are, you can think of in a clockwise direction. The overall circuit is still doing this, right? So if there's 15 amps flowing out at the same time, there's five amps flowing in this way. So that also means that as 15 amps are trying to go this way, five amps are trying to go this way. So we only have, we have an overall 10 amp surplus you can sort of think of. So when we take the neutral out of this equation, what happens? Kirchhoff's current law states that any amount of current in a series circuit is gonna be the same throughout the entire circuit. So when this happens, we have an overall amount of current that is equal regardless of what's happening here. We're combining two different resistances, so we have to figure out the total circuit resistance. Um, we're gonna figure out what the total wattage is and everything, but what's going to happen is a certain amount of voltage is gonna go through this, uh, Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law as well in a series circuit says that the voltage drops across each resistance have to add up to the total voltage for the circuit. So we still have to have 240 volts over here. It's just that the drops across each one of the resistances are gonna be different. So this is going to experience a certain amount of voltage and this is going to experience a certain amount of voltage and they're not gonna be the same, which is why this is a problem because now instead of just having 120 volts feeding this toaster and 120 feeding the TV, we're probably gonna have like 180 on one and like 60 on the other. So that's a really huge problem. So let's go into that. All right, so the math, this is where it gets a little crazy. I know, just stick with me. I try, I drew it all first so that I could try to fly through this. But in this situation, instead of just using Ohm's law or Joule's law, we combine them both. And this is why it's really helpful for you to know the formula wheel um, because it mixes all of these values, right? Like the reason we have a circle that we put E equals I times R and we call that the Ohm's law circle. And then we have power, which is P equals uh, I times E. Um, and we have a separate circle form is because most of the time calculations with resistance and power are not gonna be in the same thing because Ohm's law is only a function of resistance, current, and voltage, and Joule's law is only an, a, a, a amount of power that's being transferred. It has nothing to do with resistance. Those things are just like apples to oranges, right? Like <laughs> they're just two different things, but there's a way mathematically to combine them and some cool engineer somewhere came up with this thing. So it's these mix all of the different variations of resistance and power with all of these different values. So to solve this whole problem, to figure out what's gonna to happen to each load, there's five different things we want to look at or that we can evaluate. So we're gonna use five different formulas to evaluate all of this stuff. Um, we're also gonna use total circuit resistance, which isn't any part of that, but I just drew it down here because that's the fifth equation that we wanna be able to evaluate things. So the first thing that we need to figure out is the separate resistances for each one of these loads. So we said the TV is a 600 watt uh, rated TV. So uh, the toaster is 1800 watt. Uh, rated. So what is the actual resistance now that we have um, each specific load to account for? So if we're talking 120 loads, what it is rated at before the neutral drops out, then we have to look at 120 volt circuit over 1800 watts, and that gives us eight ohms. So if we didn't worry about the, the neutral drop, this is what we would have. We'd have an eight ohm resistor operating as it's supposed to be. And on this one, same exact thing, it's just a different value. So we're doing 120 squared over 600 watts and that's 24 ohms. So the total circuits resistance is going to be the addition of those two things. Now that we're in a 240 volt environment and we've lost a neutral, we have to make those two separate resistors one large resistor to be able to evaluate it any further. So the next thing we do is we take our series resistance formula, which is the sum of all of the resistances. So our RT or our total um, is eight plus 24, right? We just took those out of them. So now we have a total resistance in that series circuit of 32 ohms. So the next thing we need to do is figure out, well, what's the total current flow? Cause right, K, uh, KCL, which is um, Kirchhoff's current law, states that in a series circuit, 
the total amount of, of uh, current that's flowing is gonna flow through the entire circuit. It's gonna be the same everywhere. So we need to figure out what the total circuit is now that we've lost a neutral and there's current flowing across these two loads. So our total current is gonna be E over RT or our total, our new uh, total resistance that we found. So it's gonna be a 240 volt circuit now because we lost our neutral over what our total resistance is, which we just found is 32. And that shows that there's 7.5 amps flowing in this new 240 volt circuit. So that's useful, we need to know that. Next thing we're gonna do is figure out the voltage that is dropping across each one of these loads now that we know what the total resistance is and now that we, and we know which each individual resistance is, but now that we also know how much current is flowing through the entire circuit. So the, uh, I put EN for like E, which one are we talking about? <laughs> times, or it equals the, the total current, which we just figured out, times each resistance, so RN. Um, in this case, it's gonna be E1 and R1 or E2 and R2. So the voltage for the first load is going to be different than the voltage of the second load. So the voltage for the first load, we're gonna have 7.5 amps because that's the whole circuit. Regardless of how we're evaluating, it's, there's going to be a total 7.5 amp current flow multiplied by its specific resistance. So the first one is eight ohms, right? We said the toaster has an eight ohm resistance to it. So with a 7.5 amp current flow on this greater 240 volt circuit, it's only gonna have 60 volts to run that load. So if we have a 60 volt, or a 60 volt power, or, so, if, so if we're providing a 60 volt pressure, you can think of in voltage to this toaster, it's not 120 volts, it's less. So what's gonna happen is that toaster's not gonna produce enough. It's not gonna have enough pressure behind it to really be able to heat anything. So it's gonna be under voltage or under driven. Next one, E2, which was our TV. We still have 7.5 amps either way, but we have a different resistance, which is 24 ohms. And so 24 ohm resistor uh, is gonna have a 180 volt pressure across it because these two things are still, ha they have to add up to 240 volts. So Kirchhoff's voltage law, KVL in a series circuit means that you have to have any, whatever your power supply is, the total voltage dropped across any loads have to add up to that. So it always has to be 240 in the entire circuit. So it just, it basically proportionally drops or raises depending on what the resistances are for each one of them. So you can see 180 volts being provided to a TV, not so good, <laughs> you know, like it's gonna be overdriving that TV. And it's probably gonna burn the TV out. And let's see how, when I say burn it out, what do I actually mean? That's the last step of this. So we need to figure out what the actual wattage or, and when you think of wattage, wattage is not consumption. A lot of people do say it's power consumption. Power's not consumed, it's transferred. So it's transferred from one thing to another thing to do some work. So in this fifth uh, final part of this, we have to look at our wattage. So the total power is gonna be equal to the square of the voltage or voltage squared over the resistance for that specific load. So the first load, we had an eight ohm resistor. We have a voltage that's only 60 volts squared. So that means that that is gonna be 450 watts, which is the toaster should be producing 1800 watts, but it's only gonna be producing 450 watts. Right, so you have a toaster, you try to put your hand above it, it's not gonna be producing very much because it's only 450 watts that are able to be produced on this new circuit condition. And then if you go down to the other one, we have a, a, a much higher voltage, like way higher than it should be. So it's gonna be overdriven, it's gonna have a lot more wattage on it. So if we take the voltage squared divided by 24 ohms, which we know that that's what the resistor is, then we have 1350 watts. So this 600 watt TV that's only rated to have 600 watts of power being pushed through it or transferring that much power, it's gonna have 1350 watts worth of power. So that thing's going to burn up. It's just overdriving, just way too much. So none of the conductors, the insulation or anything that's gonna be able to handle it. There's probably some boards and stuff in there that are gonna fry because you're just overdriving that thing. So that is what happens when you lose a neutral in a multi-wire branch circuit. And that's why it's extremely, extremely important when you are figuring out things that are multi-wire branch circuits to ensure that you're not gonna lose a neutral or that you at least try to balance your loads as equally as possible in a multi-wire branch circuit to just ensure if anything does happen, you don't also destroy a bunch of equipment. 
So hope that helped. Love you crazy people. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you got comments or there's any kind of like similar weird uh, videos, weird situational kinds of things that you guys want me to do some videos on. Love you crazy people. See you in the next one.